Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make strawberry and elderflower champagne. It's dry, it's crisp, it's fruity, it's the taste of summer. No fancy equipment, no expensive ingredients. You can make this for pennies. Hello, my name's Hugh. Welcome to English Country Life. Today's video is about this. Strawberry and elderflower champagne. It's really dry. It's like a great dry carver or a dry champagne, a proper grown-up sparkling wine. Perfect for the summer, for barbecues and just for sitting out with friends. It's cheap. It needs a bit of fruit from the garden, some flowers from the hedgerow, sugar from the supermarket, nothing that's going to cost you any serious money and no proper equipment, no demijohns and airlocks and racking and siphons and all that malarkey. You can do this with a few empty pot bottles. Let me show you how. We're going to head down to the vegetable garden. Near our burning pile we've got the most glorious elderflower tree. It actually serves as a very efficient barrier between our compost bin area and the vegetable garden itself. Now you can see it's wonderful, it's in full bloom at the moment and these are the blooms which we've used in the past for this elderflower and strawberry champagne. So what we need to do is gather some of these blooms but careful selection is important so let me show you how we select those blooms let's look at the blooms that you're looking for this set of blooms here has a lot of unopened flowers so it's best to leave those the second set of blooms has a lot of brown flowers so they've gone over and are past giving you some good flavor what we need is a bloom like this one where all of the flowers are open there's lots of pollen which gives you that flavor for this recipe we need eight large elderflower blooms but best to be careful with that pollen because shaking it here you can see all of the pollen is disappearing which would mean all the flavor would be lost The next thing we need to do is gather some strawberries. Now it's okay to buy them commercially from the supermarket if you're not lucky enough to have a strawberry patch like we are. But we're going to go down to the vegetable and fruit area and get picking. Best to pick the strawberries when they're ripe, so beautifully red in colour. And I know it seems obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway. Remove any of the green stalks and any of the green foliage so you're left just with the ripe fruit. For this recipe we need about 500 grams of strawberries and it is a nice way to spend some time on a beautiful sunny day. And we're all set with our foraged ingredients so that's eight large elderflower blooms and 500 grams of strawberries. An important part of the preparation is sterilising your brewing vessel. We're using a small amount of supermarket basic thin bleach diluted with a lot of water. It's enough to kill any bacteria or mould that might ruin the brewing mixture. It should be left for at least 10 minutes and rinsed thoroughly before adding any ingredients. We're using a proper beer brewing bucket for our brew, but in reality any lidded bucket will do the job. On the elderflower blooms we only need the flowers themselves as the pollen they contain has all of the flavour. The green stalks aren't needed so we're going to remove all of those flowers into a bowl. It's a very simple process just gently pulling them away from the stalks. It doesn't matter if the odd petal is left on those stalks as long as most of the flowers are harvested. The strawberries are just as easy to prepare. They only need to be roughly chopped to help release the natural sugars and flavours for the brewing process. We've now got the main flavours for our elderflower and strawberry champagne in a bowl. There are a few other things we now need to add, so let's have a look at those. 
For our recipe, we're going to add 200 grams of raisins. Just like the strawberries, they need to be roughly chopped. Raisins add body to the wine, giving it a bit more of a rounder texture. Now that we've removed the elderflowers from the blooms, roughly chopped strawberries and roughly chopped sultanas, all three of those can be added to the sterilised brewing bucket. The next thing is to get some white sugar prepared. We're using very, very basic and cheap white granulated sugar. We're going to dissolve that in a litre of water and that really needs to be warm water because it helps the sugar to dissolve a little bit faster. Now that's all in a bowl, all we need to do is give it a stir until all that sugar has dissolved. The sugary mixture then needs to be poured into the brewing vessel with your elderflowers, raisins and strawberries. As this recipe is for 5 litres of elderflower and strawberry champagne, we're going to add a further 4 litres of warm water to the brewing vessel. Before we get to adding yeast to the mixture, which is the main component for fermentation, we're going to lower the pH slightly by adding two tablespoons of lemon juice. This will help the yeast work at its best. For this recipe, we're going to use one teaspoon of brewer's yeast, and we're going to add that to a small amount of orange juice to pre-activate it before we put it into our fermentation vessel. And this is what we're looking for. After a few minutes, the yeast is activated and you can see a wonderful bubbly foam forming at the top of the orange juice. That's ready to be added to the fermentation bucket. As an optional extra, we're going to add some of our homemade strawberry cordial, which we made last year from a huge glut of strawberries. The recipe will taste just as good without it, so if you haven't got it, don't worry. We've now got the elderflowers, the strawberries, the sugar, the lemon juice, the raisins, the yeast and the optional strawberry cordial all in that brewing bucket. We're going to give that a really good stir ready for fermentation to begin. This is the easy part. We need to leave the yeast to act on the sugars in the mixture and turn it to alcohol. At this stage, it's important to cover the bucket as it will easily be ruined by flies, particularly vinegar flies getting into the mixture. As we are using a brewing bucket, it comes with a lid and an airlock valve, which allows gas from the fermentation process to vent without allowing vinegar flies in. If you are using an ordinary bucket, cover it with a tea towel, or if you have a lidded bucket, lift the lid periodically to vent any excess gas. The mixture will bubble violently for a number of days, but when that's complete and the bubbling stops for the primary fermentation, this is what your mixture will look like. If we look closely at the strawberries, you'll notice that they're almost white. That's because all of that lovely flavour and the colour from the strawberries is now in the liquid. We can now move on to the next stage. We need to strain the large chunks of fruit from the mixture. We're going to use just a basic kitchen sieve over a funnel and we're straining the liquid into a 5 litre demijohn. That's because we need to complete a second stage of filtering before we can bottle the liquid. And this is what we're trying to remove at this first stage. There should be no large chunks of fruit left before we start a finer filter. In stage two of the filtering, we need to remove the elderflower pollen from the mixture. We do this by lining the kitchen sieve with a muslin cloth, and normally we'll have three or four layers of that cloth for the liquid to strain through. This time, we'll filter immediately into one litre plastic pot bottles. These are designed to hold gas liquids, so they're absolutely ideal for this purpose. And just so you can see why this stage is important, this is the pollen that's strained out of the mixture. To finish this step, pop the lid on the bottle. You'll notice that there's a little bit of give in the plastic bottle. And that's good and we'll need that for the next stage. Here's 
one of the great advantages of using a plastic bottle. When you squeeze it now, having squeezed it at the beginning, you can feel that it's absolutely rock hard. And that's because there's a buildup of gas inside the bottle. You can also notice that the sediment from the yeast, etc., has started to settle at the bottom of the bottle. Now, what we need to do is open that bottle and let some gas out, otherwise it's going to explode. But what that will do is stir up some of this sediment. We need to do this for a good week until the bubbles are not massive when we vent it. And at that point, we pop it into the fridge, chill it well, let all the sediment settle out, and when we open it, because there's not as much gas, it won't stir up the sediment. Let me show you. Get a hiss, now watch. Sometimes you need to put the cap back on quick, but this lot's had a few days, but you can see lumps of sediment getting stirred up. They'll soon settle down again. But you can see why there's a process here that if you don't vent it, it'll burst. But when you do vent it, it stirs up sediment. So you've got to vent it enough that it's not foaming this violently. Then put it in the fridge, chill it down, let it settle, and it will be gently sparkling when we put it in the glass. Let's have a closer look at that sediment being stirred up when we open this bottle. If you look closely, there's large lumps of white sediment moving around as the gas lifts it and stirs it into the liquid. When you make a wonderful drink, serve it nicely. Get a decent glass. Dip the rim in some lemon juice or lime juice. Shake off too many drops and then just frost it just a little in some icing sugar. We could pour our elderflower and strawberry champagne straight into glasses but we prefer to decant into a jug. That's because we're trying not to stir up the sediment at the bottom of the bottle. It's one single pour and that means we're less likely to unsettle that sediment and we're more likely to get a clear wine in our glass. Look at that now. You can just see the bubbles rising through the liquid. And that's actually a lovely warm orangey pink colour. All that's left is for us to pour ourselves a glass and look at that fizz. That's my recipe for strawberry and elderflower champagne. I'm going to be honest and say I prefer it over straight elderflower. I think having some fruitiness in it makes it a lovely, summer, richer drink than elderflower alone. If you're enjoying this kind of content, can you spare us five seconds? Click the thumbs up button just down there. And if you'd like to leave us a comment, what else you'd like to see on the channel, we'd love to hear from you. Slows are getting ready down there. Do you want to see slow gin? or maybe blackberry brandy. I was thinking of doing blackberry wine. Any interest in that? If you're interested in those kind of videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it. And you'll hear as soon as we publish them. But whatever you do, come back and see us soon. Take care.